so much for the introduction. The introduction. It, it's it's uh, for me. It's really a pleasure uh, having this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, time management. Uh, and I would like also to start by complimenting all the ladies that are here because today is the International Women's Day. Uh, although for me, all days are International Women's Day, but that's another thing. Uh, so, um, time. This is a critical issue. And uh, when, when one talks about time management, uh, people uh, start thinking about immediately about uh, tools, software tools, uh, agendas. Uh, um, uh, there's a lot of information on the on the internet and and everywhere about time management. Uh, we have books, we have courses, we have lots and lots of, of things. And uh, here are some examples of some of the, some of the the uh, the, the tools and. That, that that are available out there to manage time. Uh, despite this, uh, most people or many people are always late and many people also fail to uh, comply with the deadlines. So something is wrong, okay, in what we know about time management. And uh, in this talk, I, I'm going to try to identify um uh, the 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 missing elements or the most common commonly miss missing elements of effective time management that that's what this talk is all about uh and and to do this i will start by uh a small evolution a brief evolution of time of time management uh, strategies and the first one is of course uh, not performing time management at all we can simply uh, do the tasks that we can when they they are uh, uh, offered to us and and just perform as 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 uh, um, uh, in a best effort way okay as best we can uh, and this is, of course, one, one technique that is, well, uh, old since, since the beginning of, uh, of, of, of humankind, where people just simply uh, addressed the tasks that, that, uh, that, that uh, were offered to them and without concerns of optimizing their time. Uh, of course, this is not the, the best way to do this we are going to see better ways to do this but and and uh, in order to assess the the, the goodness of a given uh, uh, strategy i'm going to use what i call a performance uh, graph okay that uh, in the horizontal uh, axis we 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 put the the workload okay in the vertical axis we put the completed work and when we don't perform time management, basically uh, we have uh, some performance graph like this. Okay, at first, in the first part of the curve, we can see that we can manage with well uh, a given number of tasks. And then when the the the, the, the workload increases, our our uh, results uh, get to well to to to. Uh, be a little bit erratic okay sometimes we we perform well sometimes we perform uh, very uh, badly and so we cannot offer a, a consistent way of, of uh, uh, performing tasks so this is the first strategy the one that okay in some cases this this is not all bad because in some cases this can be perfectly okay for instance a guy that performs uh, highly spe specialized tasks or something that that uh, for instance in the artistic area okay we don't want to produce many uh, results we want to produce the best results and whenever this is the case probably no time management is the best thing to do uh, but of course 
in in most cases this is this is this is not true so the the, the second era of time management uh, was that of efficiency and this arose uh, with the, with the first industrial revolution and second industrial revolution uh, and where uh, people just uh, realized that time is money okay so all minutes of your time are precious and you cannot waste them so you have to uh, work 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 if we plot this in another type of graphic where you have the time and the work rate here you simply work at uh, at full speed okay as much as possible of course sometimes you have to go to the toilet <laughs> so uh, you you must stop you must stop uh, working but then you come back and continue working 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 uh, until the end of time uh, and this this um, treats you this strategy treats you as a resource that we have to uh, we have to maximize uh this resource okay so uh of course this leads to better results that than no time management if we use our uh, well known by by now uh, performance graph we can see that okay we can produce a little bit more work okay the completed work is is higher uh, up to a certain point but of course uh, from this point onwards, uh, we can see that, well, time does not stretch. So you have no more time. If you're working at full speed, 100% of your time you're working, basically you cannot do more, okay? Um, well, and this is, this is the end of our talk. No, of course not, <laughs> because uh, there are ways to improve this okay uh, although we cannot create more time we can still improve this situation uh, and in this case this this strategy the the, the strategy of maximizing the efficiency uh, uh, works well for uh, given periods of time uh, and when we have a limited variety of tasks, for instance, in a production line, uh, but basically this treats you, treats you as one more element in a production line, basically that's it. Uh, and the decisions are all one dimensional, work or not work. You simply are working at full speed or you have to break. Working at full speed or you have to break. And this, although it, it represents uh, uh, an improvement over the no time management strategy it's good but it's not good enough so we have to uh, increase uh, our 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 output uh, in terms of, of, of um, uh, work perform completed work and how can we do this well there's another strategy that all of us know this, uh, I'm, I'm sure, which is that of prioritization, okay? Uh, in this strategy, you simply uh, classify your tasks according to their urgency and to their importance, okay? So we divide your space in four quadrants, okay? And you have urgent and important tasks in the, in the upper right, corner here urgent uh, less urgent but important tasks in the uh, upper left uh, quarter and the urgent tasks but not uh, so important in the uh, in the in the lower right hand side uh, quadrant and the, the tasks that are not urgent and not important so you classify your tasks here so that your decisions are here are two dimensional in the the case the previous case the decision was work or not here at least you have two dimensions okay so you can de de decide this this in the 20th century was uh, the second half of the 20th century was very common and still is in fact any uh, time management strategy can be used even as we 
mentioned uh, that I've seen before, no time management at all. It's, it, you, can, you can use that, okay? Uh, so this is still uh, in use and it's okay. Uh, the problem with, with this is that some tasks may, 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 may starve because you don't have time for them, okay? So they are waiting. It's more or less like in the operating systems where some processes that are not uh, that have low priority do not get do not get uh, CPU central processing unit uh, time. So this is more or less the same. Um, uh, it's a phenomenon that that we have. There are ways to to uh, for dealing with this. We can increase the 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 urgency of the tasks uh, as they get older. Okay. Uh, and and so they they could uh, pass from this quadrant to this one here, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, uh, it's a strategy. And can we look at the results of this strategy in our performance graph? Okay, let's look at it, and we see that okay, oh, but this is the same that as the the efficiency. Yes, it's the same because in terms of completed work because this strategy strategy does not create more time okay so basically you're doing a higher percentage of important tasks but the amount of completed work is the same why because you have not created uh, no you have not created more time with this strategy so uh, in terms of completed work it's it's uh, exactly the same uh, so we have here a clue, we should try and create time. This looks like, okay, something like, well, out of the, uh, Einstein's mind, but no, <laughs> it's, it's very simple to create time. And one possibility, uh, this is another time management uh, strategy, is multiplying your time through delegation. So instead of having two dimensions, urgency and importance, we have a third dimension. You try, you have to identify someone that does uh, work for you on, 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 on who you can delegate some tasks. And in this, this way, we can have N planes, so we are multiplying our time uh, the total time by m okay uh, of course this is something that is it's not new uh, it's the, it's been done throughout the ages of course uh, even even uh, there's one story that that uh, uh, bernini what who was a, a an Intel, uh, italian sculptor and 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 uh, the architect and if you go to Rome, you, you see Bernini's sculptures everywhere in the Vatican, but also outside the Vatican. Uh, and he delegated most of his works. And people say that if he had not delegated uh, the execution of, of many sculptures, he would still today be working on, 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 on those sculptures. And he is from the 17th century. What he did, well, he, he just outlined the, the 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 uh, roughly the the sculpture then his students would would uh, uh, complete the, the the sculpture almost to the finishing point and then he would give the final uh, touches the final details so this is this is something that that's that was done by Bernini but it's still done today by many 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 people the the difficulty with this this is very effective, but the, the difficult here is the third dimension, who we do delegate tasks. Okay, we, we should keep the, the tasks that we perform be best, we should do them the, ourselves. But then we have to delegate the other tasks that we don't, we don't uh, uh, feel quite comfortable in doing them. So we have to choose someone to do them. And this is the difficult part, okay? You have to identify who's the best person to perform that, that task. 
this takes some practice. Uh, some people uh, are very good at delegating. Okay. Uh, here, uh, and, and those are typically politicians always delegate everything. Okay. They don't do anything. They simply delegate. Okay. Uh, and some leaders do that. Okay. Some because they are like that, others because they, they have to do it, they have no alternative. And then there, there are these this kind of, 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 of uh, persons that are the perfectionists. They, they cannot, they are not able to delegate anything because they think they are the best at every task and they, they simply, if they delegate, the task will not be performed as good as, as, as they would do them themselves so basically we have these two extremes and sometimes we have to fight uh, ourselves in trying to okay even though i would do this better than this guy i must delegate okay this is the the the, the dilemma of a perfectionist okay fortunately Fortunately, not all people are not all people are politicians or perfectionists, and they can try to identify uh, the best person to delegate some of the tasks. So we have here three dimensions instead of, of one or, or two. And uh, if we look at our performance graph, it's better. Why? Because we multiplied our time. We have now uh several uh tasks that are being done in parallel okay so uh we found we broke the barrier of time and we we found ways of completing uh more work okay uh, so this is good and one could 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 think okay so uh this is it there's no more way of improving this uh in terms of strategies there is still one more, okay? Let's uh, think of it a little bit. Because nowadays we can automate many things. We, we have computers, we have uh, uh, intelligent systems uh, that can perform uh, certain tasks autonomously. Uh, autonomously. So basically we can uh, automate parts of our tasks and we also can invest some some of our time in preparing uh, in planning in organizing in automating some tasks and this is the the the, the ultimate strategy for time management uh, it's time investment you invest some of your time to gain time in the future so we invest you spend some time today in creating the conditions for uh, organizing for preparing for automating the execution of, of, of tasks of task that you have to do in the future and if we do that so basically your work rate is not uh, always the same as in the case of the efficiency in fact it's uh, it can grow over time as you automate or as you organize or as you prepare more and more tasks so this is this is the secret of, 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 of time investment it's more or less the same as money and and in fact we all know that some people say time is money okay so you invest some money to make more money and here you invest some time to make more time okay so uh, if we look at our performance graph here, we can see that we can, in fact, increase a little bit more our completed work using this strategy. So this is wonderful. So we have, uh, but I, let me stress that we can, any of these strategies can be adequate for what we, for what we want to achieve, okay? There are situations where no time management is perfect. There are situations where efficiency or prioritization is enough. Uh, but there are other situations where you have to multiply your time or, or even invest uh, some time in, uh, for gaining time in the future. Uh, so that's it. Is it? Is, is there anything else? Well, 
uh, it's the, there is the combination of all these, of course. Uh, but uh, the, the problem with this is that um, uh, we cannot always look only at the uh, maximization of completed work. And uh, why? Because we are not machines, okay? Uh, we, uh, if we keep on uh, increasing our workload, and you have noticed by now, I'm sure, that if your workload increases, even with any of these strategies, your output is, is flat, okay? So it increases up to a certain point, but then it reaches its maximum level. And this would be fine, but in fact, in reality, if you keep increasing your workload, what happens is this, okay? Basically, uh, you will try to do more and more work, you're, and, and then simply you cannot cope with this added pressure and uh, your completed work output is going to go down and you collapse simply, okay? Uh, this is more or less, again, what happens with operating systems in, in computer operating systems where the operating system uh, if you keep increasing the 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 amount of processes in in, in a machine it will start uh, it will enter in thrashing which is which means that the, the operating system is completely occupied in doing uh, nothing, nothing useful from a, from the user point of view. It, it's it's doing lots of tasks, but this task is simply uh, uh, switching processes from one to another, from one to another, and then basically the amount of useful work uh, it's going to 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 uh, go down. And this is what we have to avoid. And how uh, can we avoid this? Uh, simply by uh, realizing that we are not machines, that uh, the objective is not to uh, produce the, the highest uh, possible amount of work at any cost, is to produce the highest possible amount of work with quality, okay? So, uh, time uh, is not managing us. It's we that are managing time. We are not puppets in, in, in the hands of, of time or in the hands of a, a, a tool, a time management tool. This is one, one of the things that, that, that I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, uh, we have tools, but some tools, most tools for time management, uh, their perspective is, okay, we want to maximize the output, the, the, the completed work uh, that you can uh, produce in a given amount of time. So basically, uh, they are running us and we don't, we don't want this. We don't want to be run by, run by, by, um, by tools. And this is one of the things that, that fails. Uh, because we're not, we are not machines. We are basically persons, okay? And persons are made up of uh, emotions, feelings. And this is the dimension that, that is lacking in, in, in many, many tools. It's the emotional aspect, okay? Emotions are a combination of, of, of cultural aspects, societal aspects, psychological aspects, and, and many more because I'm not a specialist in this area. But anyway, uh, we all understand that emotions, uh, we, cannot, we cannot describe them. Uh, and, uh, and they are the result of many factors, okay? So everything we do is in fact uh deriving from our from our feelings from our emotions we have feelings of ambition we have feelings of guilt of fear of anxiety of happiness of freedom it's basically what we do whenever we do it uh, and whatever we do it's 
uh, always relate to emotions. Even uh, the things that we think that are the most rational ones, they always have to do with emotion. And this is the dimension that is uh, that was lacking, as I've uh, said just so, uh, that is lacking, uh, lacking in uh, time management uh, of, of most people. Uh, emotions uh, are, in fact, what and, uh, uh, govern our all our uh, time management decisions, uh, either in the long term or in the medium term or in the short term. Okay, and this relation also it's it's also it's also important because the long term we should be aware of this long term decisions. Uh, long-term time management uh, is highly related to ambitions, okay, to, to what we want to achieve uh, uh, with, uh, with our work and, uh, uh, and more than our work, of course. Uh, and these long-term decisions influence or define medium-term decisions, which in turn influence and define uh, short-term decisions. And the other way, uh, it's also important. Short-term uh, actions contribute and decisions contribute to medium-term uh, actions and decisions and results uh, which contribute to long-term. If we are aware of this, uh, it makes it, makes it easier for us to take a decision. Okay, will this short-term decision uh, impact in what way are my medium term objectives and the same for medium term and long term okay this is very important and this whether we like it or not have has to do with our emotional state okay. um, and it's the our emotional state that that also basically deal, uh, tells us how to deal with with tasks how to deal uh, to decide what we want to do or not, or, or not, how to how we work we in in a team, okay, or in a project, how we uh, take on multiple tasks, uh, how we divide tasks in smaller into smaller tasks, how we uh, plan for meetings, everything that we do have has to do with emotions. Okay, and with these uh, three uh, uh, horizons that we have, short term, medium term, and long term. And what I'm going to uh, talk about uh, from, now, from now on is just some approaches, some techniques that can benefit from uh, this, this uh, coordination between short, medium, and long term. And with the, the realization that uh, there, are, there is always a rational uh, part in our decisions and also an emotional uh, part uh, component in our decisions. This is very, very important. We have to always think of these uh, uh, aspects. And of course, in our day to day, we, we have to, to take. Uh, some short-term decisions that 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 uh, have to do with emotions. For instance, okay, we have a task and we have a deadline. Okay, do I feel uh, that I should start working on this task on this task or not? Well, today is not the day. I'm I'm not in the mood for this. So basically, I want to postpone it and maybe tomorrow I will do it. Or the other way around. Okay, I have this task, and today, although the deadline is, is still one month away, I want to do it now because now it's the right time. I feel I feel that that I would I, I like doing this. So basically, our strategy should should be like this: we should start a task uh, as soon as possible, okay, irrespectively of the deadline. But okay, the better the better the sooner we start we start it the better okay so basically we should start our task as soon as possible why because we want to have freedom to 
decide today I don't want to, to work on this. I will do it tomorrow or in three days, okay? Because I still have a margin. This is, only, this is also why we should be conservative uh, or pessimistic about estimating the duration of a task. When we always uh, have to estimate the duration of a task. I will take one week to do this or one day or two hours or whatever, but we should be pessimistic. Why? Because if we are optimistic, then there's a high probability that we cannot, we cannot uh, complete this task on time and we are in trouble, basically. If we are pessimistic, prob in high probability, we will finish our task uh, ahead of schedule. And what, we do, uh, what do we do with the remaining time? Okay, we can do lots of things. We can, we can invest this time in organizing, in automating, in preparing other tasks. So basically in increasing, uh, in increasing our, our uh, efficiency. We can uh, use this uh, in, in dealing with uh, urgent, I don't like uh, urgent tasks, but we'll talk about this later on. But we, we have more freedom if we are uh, pessimistic in, uh, in estimating the duration of, of a, ta uh, a task. There are some tasks that I always like uh, to mention, which is reporting. Sometimes we have to do, for instance, an annual report. Oh, this is something that we have to do in January uh, about the, the, the previous year. So basically, I don't care about this now. We are in March, March 8th, the 8th. So, the reporting will be in January next year. Why should I care about this? Because now I have all the elements fresh in my mind. So if I do something that is relevant for, the, for a report, then I should take a note of this. In a file, in, a, in whatever, I should take a note immediately. I will lose 60 seconds in noting down the information uh, for for this report and then when I have to do the report I will save lots and lots of hours just trying to recall what I did in, in the in the whole uh, year about this so basically it's it's a kind of investment you invest one two three minutes five minutes once in a while in order to perform a task that will ease uh, the execution of the task later on it's also a form of, of, of investment. So reporting is a special thing. One other thing, of course, is uh, multiplexing. We talk, oh, sorry, uh, I, I forgot uh, this. Uh, I, I was uh, looking at the slide ahead. So uh, still related with, the, with, this, with this task with, uh, issue is urgent tasks. Okay, what's urgent tasks? tasks that we have to perform in the near future, okay? And for me, I'm very critical about this. There are no urgent tasks. The uh, urgencies are, uh, exist in hospitals, okay? Those urgencies, we, can, we cannot uh, predict them. Uh, normally, an urgent task is something that results from bad planning from other people, okay? So basically, if you spend a lot of care, you have a lot of care in organizing your agenda, we'll talk about this later on, organizing your agenda or uh, uh, harmonizing your uh, short-term, mid-term mid and, and, and long-term decisions. And then uh, this colleague of, uh, of ours comes and says, oh, I need this for, for yesterday or for today at uh, 5 p.m. So you have to stop all what you're, uh, everything you're, what, uh, you're doing, uh, everything you're doing, and do this. Come on, you're not respecting my, 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 my uh, uh, task management strategy, my organization, because you want me to stop what I'm doing just to do something for you. So urgent tasks, are, uh, I would say, 95% of the time res the result of bad planning from others, okay? Uh, and I look at near future, mid-term mid, mid, mid future and long-term future as a, as a tree. 
so what I do in my in my time management strategy is, is like this. Okay, if the tasks that are in the near future for me are the trunk of a tree, you cannot move a trunk of a, of, of a big tree. Okay, so those I will not change and I will not move because I have to deal with them with them now. Okay, then if someone asks me to do something that it's in my midterm well these are the branches of the tree and i can have uh, some degree of, 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 of freedom to move these branches so okay maybe i can con consider this if someone asks me to do something in, in what i consider the long-term future oh these are the leaves of my tree and the leaves of my tree can move quite easily so basically uh, if something is in short term, I don't move it anymore. If something is in the mid term, I consider moving it a little bit. If something is in the long term, I have lots of freedom in moving it. So this is this is for me the the the, the time management tree. Of course, you can ask, okay, what's the near future, the mid term future, the long term future? This is highly this is this highly depends on what you feel. Okay, near future can be one hour or can be one day or can be three days it depends on on the on the the, the scale at, at which you are thinking midterm can be one day can be one week can be one month it depends on what you're dealing with uh, long term can be one one month can be six months can be five years okay it depends also so basically you have to be flexible in order to classify what's your Near term, mid term, and long term, according even to the, to the, to the task that you are doing. Okay, another thing is multiplexing. Uh, we we talked about delegation. Multiplexing is more or less the same thing, but without the master slave relationship. When you delegate, you are the master, and someone that receives the delegation are, is the slave, so is performing work for you. With multiplexing, this is not the case. But it's more or less the same thing. For instance, if you are in a in a, a, a project team, you have several people and they are working all in parallel. So here they they are collaborating uh, to perform uh, something and they are working in parallel. Okay, uh, without master slave relationship. Uh, okay. Uh, so basically, this is more or less like. The guys from communication know this uh, frequency division multiplexing. You can use several frequencies at the same time during the whole time. Okay, so this is more or less the same thing. You can you use the work of several people uh, that are working in parallel, uh, continuously working. Of course, you can also do multiplexing by slicing your time uh, into into chunks. So uh, um, you can do this. This is uh, equivalent to time division multiplexing. You, uh, in, a, in a given uh, instant in time, you perform one task, then you switch to another task, and you switch to another task, and then another, etc., until you, uh, you can return to, to the first task. This need not be exactly uh, well uh, always the, the same sequence of, of tasks but uh, the idea is that okay you can you don't need to to be working uh, always in the same task until the end you can switch between tasks uh, so this is equivalent to time division multiplexing you divide your time into uh, small uh, chunks of uh, of time where uh, in in each of these chunks you perform a part of a task so it seems that all tasks are progressing in parallel but they are not okay you are executing only one at one time but so this is what we do every day basically uh, uh, it's it's quite common okay the problem here is that we should be aware that uh, uh, switching between tasks uh, represents an overhead i've uh, you noticed I have not just put the tasks just uh, next to each other. There's a space, a, uh, a wide space between them. Well, this wide space is time that you waste in switching your context uh, in your mind 
uh, okay, because when you start task two and uh, when you stop task two and start uh, task three, you have to, okay, what was I doing in task three uh, two days ago? Okay, I was in this uh, point, so I must check. And now I have to switch everything. So basically, you're performing more tasks, but you're, um, you're wasting a little bit of time. So if, if this time is small, there's no problem. If it represents a large, large percentage of, of your, of your uh, useful time, then you have a problem. And this, uh, of course, reminds me of that, that uh, also known uh, uh, story that, uh, well, bas basically everyone knows it, uh, that uh, it's related with, with how small and how big should these this time slices be, okay? And the, the, it's, it's the story of this, this guy that uh, has a bucket, a large bucket, and puts the three handballs uh, in there and says, okay, is this bucket uh, full? And the people look at it, yes, it's full. You cannot put any more handballs in there. Well, okay, but it's not full because I can take some tennis balls and I put five more tennis balls in here. And the space is the same. Is it full now? Yeah, now it's full. You cannot put more tennis balls. Oh, but I can put ping pong balls here. So I can put 20 ping pong balls here. Uh, so basically, if we start dividing our time into smaller tasks, we can uh, put in some more tasks. But there's, then there's the problem of task switching. Uh, the, the lesson here is that you should always uh, leave some blank spaces uh, that you can fill in with other small tasks. Okay, I could uh, uh, take a bucket of water and fill the rest of the, the bucket with water and would take a lot of water, uh, surely. Okay, so basically this, 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 these uh, blank spaces here are something that you have to do uh, and, and you can use them for, for that. Okay. Uh, one other important aspect of time management uh, that has also to deal with rational aspects, but also with, with emotional aspects is meetings. Okay. Meetings are, it's a very difficult problem. Why? Because they are the major cause of time waste, basically. We have, all of us have uh, wasted uh, hundreds uh, or, or even thousands of, of, uh, of hours in, in meetings. Well, at least the, the uh, people with, with lots of years of, of, of working. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately, I must say that I've wasted hundreds or thousands of hours of, of, hours of work in meetings. Uh, and why? Because, okay, sometimes, unfortunately, most meetings are not well prepared, okay? Meetings uh, must always be, uh, are not the places for, for uh, just uh, brainstorming. It depends. Well, some meetings are for brainstorming, but even those meetings for brainstorming should be well prepared by the, by the organizer, at least, of the meeting should have some ideas. It's more or less like, like design thinking, okay? I've organized one, one session of design thinking once where in, in, in some periods of time, okay, people are there just for brainstorming, okay? But then there are other periods, periods where you have to do uh, converging work. So an unprepared meeting is something that Sometimes people go there uh, without, uh, without uh, an objective and after two or three hours leave and they, they ask, what, what have we done here during two or three hours? What, what are the results? Nothing. So simply, this is more or less like a divergent uh, lens where everyone goes to, to his own uh, corner and to his own point and there's no convergence. Okay. So this is very bad. The meeting should be prepared not only by the coordinator, but also by the participants. The participant 
when he's uh, uh, summoned to a meeting should know exactly what he's going to do there, what are his contributions, what he wants, not, not just go there and see what happens. Okay, this is not a good way. Another problem with meetings is that, okay, probably not in, not in, in many countries, but in countries like Portugal, uh, and, uh, and I, I will not mention others, uh, sometimes people uh, arrive late at the meeting. And this is uh, bad because, in fact, this talk uh, um, started uh, exactly in this way. I was one day waiting for my colleagues uh, in a meeting and I was compla complaining about uh, some of my colleagues that were late and said, come on, you don't know how to manage time. And, and the people in the room said, why don't you do a talk on time management? And this is how it, 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 it uh, happened. Okay, but anyway, um, arriving late at the meeting is very, very uh, bad because you are wasting everyone's time. So basically, you should take meetings as uh, things that are prepared, that have a, a, a specific, well-defined objective, that have a start and finishing time, uh, meetings where every participant knows exactly what's to be expected from him or her, okay? And, and so uh, in this type of meeting, the, it's very easy to converge and to arrive at decisions and to make some decisions, okay? This is very important. Um, it's, it's normally people say, well, there, there's stories about this, but uh, Richard Branson, uh, Branson uh, says that uh, no meeting uh, should take more than five minutes. Okay, he's the boss. He, he can say, okay, you have five minutes, explain it to me, and then I decide, and that's it. Of course, not, not everyone is in the place of Richard Branson, so, uh, but uh, it's a good idea, okay. Uh, Another aspect is how do you organize your overall time? Uh, and, and, and for this, my, my approach is this one. Okay, you, we have focus periods during which you concentrate on your work and nothing should distract you. You should not read your mail, you should not uh, check your social, social media, you should not as, even answer the phone because the phone is also a source of interruption. Okay, during these periods, you are working, uh, fully concentrating, uh, concentrated on, on your objectives. Then you have buffer periods, periods where you are still working, but you are dealing with uh, uh, administrative stuff, uh, and predicted issues, uh, the, the urgencies of others, okay, although I don't like them, but anyway, you always have to have some margin here uh, for uh, dealing with all sorts of uh, small tasks. And then you have free time. Free time, in, during this time, you simply do not work. This is very important. People say, okay, but this is a waste of time. You're free, you could be working. No, no, because um, it's very important for your work, even for your work, that you have free time. Remember that, okay, Newton was doing nothing when he discovered the, 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 the uh, gravity, okay? He was, he was just relaxing under a, tr uh, a tree and then a fruit fell on his head. And he, he asked, why do things fall? What's, what's this thing about falling? Why, why are things attracted to, to uh, downwards, okay? Uh, and many, many ideas uh, come to us when you are not working, okay? This is very important for creativity. This is very important for your intuition, for, for, for your results. Many of our ideas come to our mind, our mind when we are doing absolutely nothing, on when, when we are doing other things, when we are looking at other problems that have nothing to do with our basic work. This is very important. You should read, you should 
relax, you should see other things. This is uh, an important advice that I'm doing, especially for our PhD students. You should have free time. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that, okay, even during the day, how can you uh, organize uh, this? And all of you know this, this is more or less the, the Pomodoro uh, uh, approach where you have sprint and rest, sprint, rest, sprint, rest. What I try to, to organize this in a little bit different. Okay, I have sprint periods and rest periods but I do not have fixed time for this, okay? If I feel like it, sometimes, it's not often, but sometimes I, I, I feel like working three hours, non-stop. Oh, it's good, I'm doing good work. I'm, uh, this is uh, producing lots of interesting results. So why should I rest? If my, my mind is uh, relaxed and if I'm doing good work, I can continue. And the opposite also uh, happens. Sometimes I'm working uh, for 15 minutes, I say, okay, I'm exhausted. Uh, why should I keep on working for uh, 15 more minutes or for one hour? Because wh when I'm not producing, when my efficiency is it's, it's, it's very low. So basically, uh, you should be flexible with this. You should have sprint uh, periods and rest periods, uh, but but uh, you should these should not be fixed. Why? Because you should be aware that your productivity, first of all, the productivity falls as the time since last the last break uh, increases. Okay. That's one thing. And the other thing is that sometimes we are tired after half an hour's work and sometimes we are fresh after two hours work. So it depends on your emotional status also. Once again, your emotional status. So basically you should stop working, not when the work is done, but when you are tired. Okay, this is also very important. Um, because work never ends, okay? You could keep on working and working and working and working. So if you say, okay, today I'm going to work until 10, 10 in the evening or, or 11 because I have to do this. But probably you're doing this, you're tired and your productivity is at 25% or 20%. So you, uh, you produce in one hour, you really produce the same amount of work that you would produce in 12 minutes, if you would be um, fresh, if you had, uh, had, if you had had a, a, a rest period, okay? So basically, the best way to do this is just to stop when you're tired and then you come back and uh, work with much better energy, okay? And much better results. Um, Calendars, okay, everyone has uh, calendars, agendas. We have this in our uh, mobile phones. We have this in our laptops. Uh, some people say, oh, well, I, 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 I want to use a uh, calendar and I, I don't want to use a to-do list, uh, so, but uh, because the calendar has uh, the period in which I have to produce some work, and the to-do list just is just a to-do list and I have no dates in there. So basically some people prefer to-do lists, other prefer calendars. I normally combine the two of them. Uh, why? Because they are in fact complementary. A calendar, you should put in a calendar, not everything that you have to do, but just what I call the mountains, the things that you cannot move. Okay, you have a class here from 10 to 11. You, you cannot, you have no way of changing this uh, normally. So basically it, it must be here, okay? Uh, you have a meeting here at, uh, from, from, uh, from two to, to four, okay? So you cannot change this. this. This does not depend on you. So you cannot change it. So I put it here, but, uh, Normally I put in my calendar only the things that I cannot move, the things that, 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 uh, that um, 
do not depend on me and I have to be there, okay? So uh, what do I do with the rest of the time? Relax? No, of course not, okay? What I do is just, I use this time for either for focus time or for buffer time, okay? Basically, I decide, okay, I have one morning for this, I can concentrate, I can study this subject, I can invest some time here, I can do this, the, 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 this um, uh, research or whatever. Uh, so basically, the idea uh, is that, okay, uh, I keep my calendar as free as, as, as possible, only the unavoidable commitments are there, and the rest I put in my to-do list. And so, if I look at my calendar and I say, okay, I have two, hour, two hours here, three. What should I do? I go to my to-do list and I say, oh, now I feel like doing this, my second one in the to-do list. I, I really feel like doing this, so I'll do this. So I adapt my emotional status to my rational need of performing a given task. So basically, by doing this, I optimize, uh, I, I optimize the, the, my, my, my willingness to perform uh, tasks. Uh, and this also maximizes my freedom of choice, okay? I can choose what to do in a given period looking at my to-do list. So I, if I put, I could put everything, my, my all, the whole to-do list in a, in a, in, in, in a calendar for, for one week, okay? But then I would lose freedom. So basically, I prefer not doing it and keeping it in the to-do list, okay? Well, we are almost finishing, uh, and um, uh, one, one, some, some last ideas, okay? One, one important thing is that I've talked about a lot of what I do and how should I organize my time. Uh, so it seems that uh, I'm a little bit selfish, no? Okay, because, and some people say, okay, you should be as selfish as possible in your time management. If something does not, interest you you simply say no okay i will not do this you just concentrate on what you want to do and what is good for you okay i consider this an error okay a mistake this is a mistake why because you're not alone basically you are in a community whether it's a community of researchers whether it's a community of workers where it's a community of family okay uh, members of your family uh, so basically you are always um, uh, you have always have relationships with with other people and you should account for this in your time management you uh, should you should not be selfish in managing your time uh, why because sometimes you will need to delegate some tasks. You will need to ask other people to perform something. Uh, so basically you should give some time to, to other people because sooner or later, and normally it's sooner than later, you will need their time also. So basically it's an investment. You should invest some time when you perform something to other, to other people, you're investing some time um, uh, in, in, in doing something that probably in the future may uh, uh, have some, some return. It may not, okay, there's no problem with that because you're in a community, you're working for the, 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 the welfare of the community, uh, but you should, uh, in fact, always take in uh, attention, okay, to, to this. And this is a, something that a tool, a time management tool cannot do for you. It's, it's, it's something emotional. Okay, as li last thoughts, I'm sorry for, for taking so much time. Okay, but last, last, last thoughts. In fact, we've talked about time management, but we should talk about instead of life management. You're not managing your time just. If you're managing your, your time, you're being managed by time. 
you should instead manage your life because uh, you should optimize the quality of your life, not not the amount of time that you 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 you, you spend doing something. So time management, in fact, is about uh, is about your own management. It's about the quality of life, and this is a very important idea. Uh, and this links to the emotions and to the emotional aspect. Okay, it's not a, a merely quantitative thing. It's about quality of life. Okay. The other aspect, of course, is that, okay, but we have to find the right balance be between what is rational and what is emotional, because we cannot say, okay, I don't feel like working for the next uh, uh, five years. Okay, bye-bye. No, of course, you have to, to, sometimes you have to work whether you like it or not. You have to organize well your time. So basically, you should uh, find the right balance between what's, your emotional status and what your rational status, uh, having in mind that you have some uh, long-term goals and, and this will reflect in the mid-term and in the short term. Uh, but of course, in doing this, we sh you should, uh, of course, adapt this to your moods, to your emotions, to, 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 to the conditions that are always uh, changing. And the last aspect, which is it's a mixture of these uh, two is that uh, time management is something very personal because it has to do with emotions and you must uh, uh, find as i mentioned before the right balance uh, that works for you okay and this is why no tool no book no software package can do uh, this for you it's a personal uh, approach. Uh, no machine can replace you in your decisions. Okay, the guys from uh, AI will, say, will tell you that I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, but that's another discussion. But anyway, you must find what works for you. And what works for you may not work for other people. Okay. Uh, so uh, um, that's it. And I would like to uh, thank you for your time.